hey guys welcome and or welcome back to my channel my name is nay penda and if you are tuned in today we are getting into the new pro filter soft matte powder foundation from fenty beauty in this video i did apply one side using just the powder and then the other side using the foundation with the powder so that you can see how you can achieve this look in two similar ways if you are interested make sure you go ahead and keep on watching give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel without further ado let's go ahead and get into the video all right guys so i went ahead and i did my eyes off camera unfortunately one of my eyes this one in particular is tearing so we might have to deal with that as i am filming today um super annoying hate when it happens but i did purchase three out of the 50 shades of the new Pro Filter Soft Matte Powder Foundation. The shades I purchased were 480, which looks like this. 480 is my standard shade when it comes to the Fenty Foundation in both the liquid, uh, hydrating, and the matte formula. However, when I was in store, 480 just looked way too light for me. Then I also went ahead and I purchased 490. 490 looks like it could be my shade. I'm a little nervous about the undertone, but I figured 490 is darker so it may be closer to my complexion than 480 was 495 is definitely deep um i feel like this is definitely darker than my actual complexion so i figured this could be something that i use maybe to set my contour area because just in general not a lot of powders that are super deep for like contour or bronzing so i figured if they had a shade that was super dark why not go ahead and purchase it just to see how i could work it into my complexion routine I am going to go ahead and do some swatches for you guys of all three of these shades just so that you can see what it looks like on my hand. Off of Rick though, what I did want to say immediately is just I love the packaging of this. It looks super, super luxe and I just love like the silver rim and then there's a mirror at the bottom of the compacts which I feel like is super smart. So like if you are traveling, even though we're in a pandemic, let's say things get back to normal whatever the case may be, in normal life, you have the mirror in the front, then you're able to flip it and pull out your powder puff and then just like dab and apply and actually see yourself while you're doing it. So I'm sorry if I'm blinding y'all, but I feel like this is a super genius. Just like the way the product is made, I really, really, really like this. Now I'm gonna pick up a lot just because I want you to actually be able to see the swatch. But this is 480, so even though I thought it was too too light it actually looks like it could be a perfect or almost perfect match for me so the shade that i just went ahead and added was 490 which is right here um 490 is a bit a bit deeper and a bit warmer i would say um but definitely i'm loving just like the shade itself and the last shade i went in with is closest to my wrist which is 495 and just because what this to me looks like I don't know, is it a bronzer or a contour? I think this is more like a contour. It has the warmth of a bronzer, um, but I feel like it would be a little bit more purple, a little bit more red in order to really, really add warmth. Um, but as of right now, this does look like it would be a nice contour shade. So these are the three shades that I purchased. Again, in order from lightest to darkest, we have 480, 490, and 495. All right, so I went ahead and I took off my earrings. I'm gonna push my face or my hair out of my face a little bit more. The primer that I'm going to use for this powder foundation is going to be the Milk Makeup Primer. I did actually purchase the full size one, but I'm going to go ahead and finish out the mini version first. And the reason why I'm going in with this primer is because when I looked on the Fenty website, one of the things that it said to do is to apply a sunscreen underneath. Um, and I do wear sunscreen every day for the most part, like when I remember, I'm not going to lie. I'm not perfect. Um, and I will put the sunscreen that I love to use down below in the description box just because it doesn't leave me gray, it doesn't have a white cast. Um, but I figured that with a powder foundation, the reason why they would mention is something like a sunscreen and just like hydrating your skin is because they want the product to have something to stick to as well. And I really like this milk hydro primer because it is very tacky and so I feel like the product will cling to it even uh, more so when it's a powder product going on top. So this to me was like the perfect primer to test this powder out with. So I'm gonna do this in a different way. I haven't watched any reviews yet just because I want to not be biased. 
Um, but one thing as a consumer that I was thinking in my head is like, okay, if it's a powder foundation, should I use it with the actual foundation and use the powder on top, like the extra coverage, or should I just go in with the powder? Is it going to look the same? Is it going to work the same? So on one side of my face, I will be going in with the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Hydrating Foundation, and then I'll put the powder on top of this. Whereas on the other side of my face, I'm just going to use the powder. And we're going to compare and contrast, see how they look, see how they hold over the day, so that you get a better idea of how you should use this product. All right, so I just applied the foundation to this side of my face, so this side of my face is completely bare. I'm not sure if I want to go in with 480 or 490. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 480 and I'm going to use the powder puff that it comes with. And I'm going to apply it to my neck. As you guys know, my neck is darker than my actual face. And so usually, depending upon the type of top that I'm going to wear and where I'm going, that will determine if I put foundation on my neck or not. So I'm just going to take this and press it on my neck. Y'all, the immediate coverage that I saw this side just has one foundation where this side has the powder. This powder in 480 is really red. That's like the first thing I can think of is the fact that it's really red. And if you see me looking to the side, I'm just looking at my mirror. I feel like this is a good shade. I'm gonna go in with 480. And this is a Morphe M439 brush. So I'm just gonna use that, the product. And y'all, you ready? Hey, here we go. Wow. I'm just gonna pick it up and see how much more coverage I'm able to get. So if we see right here, let me tuck my hair back. If we see right here, you see where I kind of have like that natural contour line. I'm going to see how this covers that. It's definitely giving coverage. No matter what, I'm always going to have more dimension here just because of the way that my cheekbones are set up. But as far as coverage is concerned, I feel like it's doing what it needs to do. So get your actual foundation shape. Like I definitely looked at the product and I thought that it was too light. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna apply some on my forehead area as well. Then I'm gonna go under my eye and just lightly press it in. So now we have this side with just powder and this side with just foundation. And when I'm looking, they look literally almost the exact same. What I really love so far about the powder as well is that my skin looked luminous before I applied my foundation. It looked luminous once I applied my primer just a bit, but the shine was down. But I feel like with the powder and the hydrating side, I still see a bit of shine. I still see my skin poking through. Like it, I don't feel super dry basically is what I'm saying. Like even though it's a powder, my skin doesn't look like all of the light, all of the nutrients, all of the glow was sucked out of it. It still looks pretty healthy. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna mirror the look on both sides. I'm just gonna go ahead and apply my concealer. So I just applied my concealer and I'm looking up close just to see if there's any differences that I noticed when it comes to how the concealer applied on top of the powder versus how it applied on top of the liquid foundation. And honestly, I feel like on this side of my face, my pores are almost more covered up. Like they definitely look more filled in and I feel like that's because the powder did that work first. So when I apply the concealer on top, it just enhanced that or it just worked together to help that. Both sides definitely look extremely luminous. I almost want to say 
I feel like I have a little bit more coverage on the powder side and I can't figure out why that would be. Like there's no logical reason of what I can think of right now that would tell me why the concealer would be more full coverage. Um, other than maybe because it's a powder, it's sitting a bit on top versus really melting in. So it's an added layer. Um, but I definitely do feel like there's like, my pores are filled in more on the side where I have powder first and then the liquid concealer. Um, as far as how they blended, they both blended super easily. So if you're trying to figure out like, can you blend your concealer on top of this powder? Yes, yes you can. And I just gotta say like, skin is skinning right now, okay? I'm going in with the Fenty Beauty Setting Powder in the shade Nutmeg. If you haven't already, I do have a full video review that I did on these setting powders. So you can figure out which shade you can get as well. So make sure you definitely go ahead and check that out. There will be links. Now, honestly, if there's one product I'm not feeling, it's definitely this sponge. This is also a Fenty sponge. And y'all, if you've ever like wondered if you should get the Fenty sponge or not, don't. It's a little too soft for my liking. And so it has a lot of holes and rips because I use press on nails or I use nails in general. Um, so it doesn't really hold up as far as durability. Um, it definitely does blend beautifully. I just feel like it, it looks too easily for my life. So once I have that base of powder on, I don't like to let it sit for too long. I like to just blend it off. So I'm just gonna press it in. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take the same brush that I used for the powder foundation. And I'm just going to like, I don't wanna say wipe it away, but like, wipe but also blend just so that it can still be pressed in. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take 490 which was the shade that was a bit darker and I'm just going to lightly go over my face with this shade just because I feel like 480 looks good but maybe Maybe it's the lighting, but I'm feeling like I look a bit lighter and I don't want that. So I'm just gonna add this on top, just as an added layer of coverage. This can almost be like my face setting powder instead of my foundation to tie the concealer and the actual foundation all the way together. I feel like that definitely helps with like toning it down a bit. Y'all let me know in the comment section down below if you notice the difference. I definitely did. But y'all, all I can say right now, girl, it's giving. <laughs> it's giving. It's giving skin. It's giving flawless coverage. It's giving buildability. It's giving you can go on an island once COVID is over and like stretch your stuff. It's giving porcelain doll. It's giving, it's just giving. Like I am in love with this. And I was so scared about how it would turn out with me applying a liquid concealer on top of the powder, but it literally looks so seamless. I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of my face off camera and I'll be right back. Um, so one thing that I did not do off camera is I did not set it with a setting spray, just because I wanted you guys to see what my skin actually looks like with just the product. And just as a reminder, this side has foundation, liquid, and the powder foundation, whereas this side only has the powder foundation on it. Um, so I'm gonna get a little closer. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pull out my setting spray. For my setting spray today, I'm gonna use the Morphe Continuous Mist. I love this setting spray. And I'm just gonna let that sink in and do the work. Just to aid in the dry down, I'm using this fan that I got from By Kayem. They are a black owned brand that sourced all of their products and materials straight out of Africa, different countries in Africa. Um, I know they work with a lot of Ghanaian business owners and entrepreneurs. So I'm just using this fan from their site just to help me quickly melt down this foundation look. 
So this is the complete 100% final look. And y'all, I'm just going to say it. I love the way my skin looks. I'm about to pull up the compact mirror. And when I say flawless, Flawless. Just to get into the specific details of this product, it is $36. It does come in 50 shades, and the shades do correlate to everything that they have in their liquid formula or their liquid product. Um, one thing I wanted to call out, if you go to Fenty Beauty's website themselves, they do Afterpay. And if I'm not mistaken, Sephora now also does Afterpay. Afterpay is a service that pretty much allows you to buy the product and pay it off in four installments. Me personally, I use Afterpay a lot, especially when I'm shopping for clothes, just because why pay $36 when I can pay $9 every two weeks? <laughs> like, that's just me. Sometimes I do like to pay it off in advance of the due date or the deadline, but I like having that flexibility of, if you don't have everything you need right now, let's say, for example, when I first started out as a content creator, there would be things that I would love to purchase and love to buy, but I just didn't have it in my account altogether at that time. I feel like Afterpay is the perfect example of, you know, you're getting paid in two weeks, you want to get something to create a video for an event, do something really quickly, um, and so you're able to purchase it, pay it off as you go. So definitely look into Afterpay as a shopping option if you can when it comes to shopping on Fenty Beauty, if it's something that you want that you just don't think you can afford at the moment. If you watch my reviews, then you know that I like to typically do swatches, I do the application, show you the finished look, and then towards the end of the review, I usually get to my pros and cons. One thing that I want to start factoring into my pros and cons in the new year is essentially what the product claims are. So what is the brand? What is the sample website? What are the claims of this product? What does it say it will do? And allow that to factor into my pros and cons. Because if you tell me I'm going to be looking flawless and poreless and it's going to minimize all my pores, but my pores are still peeking through, you not a liar, but it just didn't work like that for me on my skin and my skin type. So I just need to factor that in for you guys. And I went to the website and I picked up what I thought was most important or what I want to test the most, that this product claims to be light to full coverage. And I would definitely say that that is true only because um, with the powder foundation, when I used the powder puff, uh, there was a certain amount of product that came onto it versus when I use my foundation brush, so I feel like you can control the amount that you put on and really get it to look the way that you want to. As far as the three shades that I purchased, I did use 480 and 490, but I did not use 495. 495 is a bit darker, but I feel like I'm gonna keep it just for my winter shade and even to try contouring because I really do like this product. Next, it claims to be a product that has long wear, but that feels light as air. I can definitely say that it does feel super light on the skin. Like my skin does not feel picky at all which does a lot for the amount of product that I put on. As far as it being long wear, I can't speak to that yet just because I did just put on the foundation. It is six o'clock, we are in the house, so I can't speak to how long it's going to last. Crease resistant, that's something that I wanted to call out. I'm gonna get a little closer. So the reason why I wanted to point out crease resistant is because I have smile lines. When I smile, I smile a lot. When I film my videos, just in general, you know, we try to be happy, so I gotta smile. And I feel like I do notice a bit of creasing right here when it comes to my smile line area. I did not apply any, uh, like, a, an extreme or a targeted amount of primer there. I didn't do anything in particular. I literally just put on my face as I normally do. And so I can say that it's not, like, crease proof. The crease is still there. I do see it. Um, I will zoom in if possible when it comes to me editing. But... There is that slight smile line that I do notice. Um, and that's normal. That's literally what happens to me with every single product just because I do have smile line, lines within my smile lines because of how much I smile. Um, so I did just want to call that out. And as far as it being sweat and humidity resistant, that's something that I thought was super interesting just because of the times that we're in with people needing to wear a mask, be outside, in the summertime, it's hot. So for me, in the summer, it was like you were sweating, but then on top of that, you had your mask. And if you wore makeup, it was just over. So I feel like this is really interesting as far as if it actually is sweat or humidity proof because I sweat a lot in the summertime. That's not a claim that I feel like I can really test right now just because it's winter. But if you do live in a hotter area or, you know, somewhere in the country where it's always hot, definitely consider the fact that this does claim to be sweat and humidity proof. Now, as far as my personal pros and cons, I feel like the actual, like, compact, the actual products, usually with fancy products, when it comes to trying to open it up, it is super hard, especially if you have nails. 
I don't know if maybe they watch one of my videos. So if they just saw what people were saying that their packaging is usually a little bit difficult to open, with this product, it's not as difficult. It's like really, really easy, even though I have my nails on, so I love that. I love the actual just compact where they have a mirror at the top, a mirror at the bottom, the powder puff, and then the actual product and just like the silver packaging. It's just super luxe to me. Like I really, 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 really do like that. And of course, as normal, I love that they always have the actual sticker on the back that shows you the shade name and you can see the actual shade of it itself. Second pro is gonna be that you can use this either on its own or with a liquid foundation. On the website, it actually tells you that you can use it in both of those ways. And so I really just love the flexibility that you have. So if you are someone that you only want the powder, you can use that. But if you're someone who you want more coverage, you wanna put the powder on top of foundation, you definitely have the ability to do that as well. Let me slow down because I feel myself talking real fast. Um, <clears throat> third thing for me is just going to be the formula. I really love the way that I was able to blend this on with the actual uh, brush that I use, the Morphe brush that I use, but more importantly, I love that I was able to lay on my concealer on top of the powder and it still looks bomb, okay? My fourth pro is going to be the fact that it says I'm 480 in the liquid and I'm actually 480 in the powder. That was something that I was really nervous and scared about, which is why I ended up buying so many alternative shades. But at this point, I just have to know I need to trust Fenty. When they say it's 480, it's 480 regardless of the formula and I really, really, really did enjoy that. So as far as the cons go, I think I already mentioned the first one just being that it's not 100% crease resistant, even though it claims to be on the website, I still did get those creasing or that creasing on my small line area. Second con, and it's not really a con, it's more so just like um would have been nice. Um, so these products, this powder is actually the same price as the liquid foundation, so they're both $36. But because I feel like a lot of people are, there's going to be a lot of people that use this as an additional step to their normal foundation routine. So I would have loved for this to be $30, or even a bit cheaper than that, um, just because there's going to be those people that use this as just like on its own. But I know for a fact that there's going to be a huge population that uses this powder to complement um, their foundation or use this to actually finish off their face because there's not a lot of setting powders for the face for dark skin people. Um, so I would have loved for this to be a little bit more affordable than the liquid or the original foundation, but that's just me personally. Um, and I honestly can't think of any of the cons right now, just because I feel like my skin looks flawless. I love, love, love the final outcome. And I feel like they did it again. If you're not new to my channel, then you know I'm not new to this. I'm true to this when it comes to Fenty Beauty. If they got our products, I'm reviewing it. I probably purchased it. I probably used it. But overall, I highly recommend this product. I really, really, really do like the way that it's sitting. I like the way that it's set on my face. And now I can't wait to watch and go see everyone else's review. If you are interested in any of the products that I used on my face today, um, that you didn't see me use on camera, everything will be linked down below in the description box. Um, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please make sure you go ahead and give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Turn your bell notifications on as well. I'll be posting every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday in 2021. So make sure that you stay tuned and you join this little family that we're having on this little corner that I have on the internet. Um, thank you guys again. I love you all so much and I can't wait to see you next time.